Christmas 2020 was a very funny Christmas, but in my household, it was even more strange. In the months running up to Christmas, me and my family went through something that I've talked about a hell of a lot as a manual handling trainer, but never really experienced. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you that story so you can really understand the reality of a slipped disc. Let's go. Rebranded safety. What's up peeps, welcome back to Rebranded Safety. Rebranded Safety does exactly what it says on the tin. We're here to change the perception of health and safety. We do that here on YouTube and we do that on the podcast as well. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you never miss another episode. So this is the second time I've made this video because the first time I made it, well, it was still really raw. And actually when we watched the video, we edited it and we finished watching it, it was like my wife had died. It was so somber. I'm gonna tell you a story of the last couple of weeks of mine and my family's life to kind of reiterate the importance of manual handling and posture and ergonomics in our workplace. And it really didn't fit the kind of overall tone of relaxed content that we kind of do here at Rebranding Safety and it definitely wasn't me. So here we go again, the aim to do it less serious but still get a very serious message across. This is not a technical video, this is a story from my life from in the final months of 2020. A strange enough year for everybody but we also went through what would be a very key event in most people's lives which is having a baby and then my wife, bless her, slipped a disc. It made things extremely challenging and really if we did put out the first video that we made you'd have seen how much it really hit us. I wasn't in a good place I was really struggling to keep up and you can really see it in that video and it didn't really as much as I want to be authentic and we, we did talk about putting that video out we just didn't fit our style like I've said so we chose not to but I really don't want to emphasize that it had a massive impact on not just my wife but the rest of the family you know our, my in-laws and my parents it has a massive impact on everyone that's involved in your family bubble so to speak so first things first let's just iron out some of the basics what is a slipped disc well the term slipped disc is actually quite misleading. The actual term for it is a prolapse disc. So if you could imagine you have chunks of bone running down your spine and then in between each of those bones you have a soft kind of gooey substance which has a hard outside but still soft compared to a bone and then an inside is real soft and gooey and this enables the spine to really move around. Now from years and years of bad posture, bad manual handling and so on, you know, not looking after your back, you can really start to wear away at those soft discs in between the bones and eventually what will happen is that disc will prolapse a bit of the inside goo will burst out of that disc that presses onto your nerves and can be really, really serious. It's extremely painful. So to add some context to the situation, my wife has always suffered with bad posture. Due to some underlying medical issues that she's had, she'd always really struggled to maintain good posture. And obviously this is gonna have an impact on her throughout the years of kind of wearing away at that, at that back. And in addition, she was, as you know, pregnant, which is hugely taxing on the back, especially towards the end. If you imagine you've got a huge baby just really kind of weighing down on your back. And if you, if you can imagine trying to carry something like that all day long, it's hugely taxing. And then the actual act of giving birth is hugely taxing on the back as well. So the back goes through such a massive event. That's something for you to consider when you're doing your maternity uh, risk assessments as well. Hopefully you don't come away from this video and go, well, she was pregnant and she gave birth and you said in the beginning that it was hugely taxed on her back, so that was the problem. The point of this story is not to tell you how to manage your back, it's to give you the why. It's to give people like me as a manual handling trainer some context to a prolapsed disc, to a slipped disc some reality to when we say how dangerous a, a slip disc is, some reality to that, a story, because we're human beings and we love a good story. The nurses and doctors and ambulance services that supported us through this time were absolutely outstanding and we owe them our greatest thanks for looking after my wife during a global pandemic as well. So thank you very much 
NHS. This all started in the last few weeks of the pregnancy. My daughter didn't want to come out. She was extremely comfortable and she was a couple weeks late. At that point, it really started to get really hard and, and frankly quite painful in my wife's lower back to carry our daughter. And then shortly after the birth, my wife started to see a private chiropractor. Because the problems weren't going away, most people will suffer from quite some quite bad sciatic or lower back pain after birth, but then pretty much starts to subside pretty quickly. It wasn't really happening that way for Sherry, so she went to a private chiropractor. For a short while, a couple of weeks, this started to work and we started to see some huge improvements. The pain was going and we thought, oh great, perfect, everything is fine. And then one Saturday morning, we got up and we went on a local dog walk and then her back progressively started getting worse. She had pains in the morning, but quite acute. And then by the end of the day, they were, they were significantly painful. Based on some advice we'd received, we went home and my wife, had a hot bath to try and relax some of the muscles around the back to, to hopefully reduce some of the pain. Unfortunately, you know, this either made it worse or coincided with it was going to get worse at that time anyway, but getting out of the bath, Sherry was in complete agony and frankly had to crawl or flop down the stairs because she could not get up and stand made it down to the living room and lied on the floor on her side in the only position that, that she could find any sort of relief and it was slight relief i mean it wasn't like oh my god thank god i'm not in pain when i lay like this a slight relief and it was so bad that we decided to call the non-emergency number here in the uk and they prescribed my wife some emergency drugs as you can imagine now with a baby it wasn't as simple as me just leaving the house jumping in the car and going to the hospital we had to call some family to come and keep an eye on sherry and the baby whilst i was out this was it getting really late in the night now. And why is that important to the story? It's not like, oh, James has got it really hard because he had to get someone to look after his daughter. It just brings some more context to the situation as to how inconvenient and challenging it is to work your life around something like a severe back injury or severe back pain. Unfortunately, those drugs didn't even touch the side and Sherry barely slept through the night. The following morning, Sherry couldn't get out of bed. And actually what ended up happening is she pretty much gracefully fell out of bed onto a sheet um, in which I would drag her to the stairs and we would try and get her downstairs. At this point, the non-emergency number advised us to take Sherry to A&E. So we got our, my mother-in-law to come and look after our daughter Maggie whilst I took Sherry to the hospital. Now, as you all know, we've been going through a global pandemic and therefore there are restrictions in hospitals on visitors. So the long and short of it, is I took my wife who was in absolute agony, crying, could barely move um, to the hospital and they wheeled her away and I wasn't allowed to go in with her. And my thoughts go out to anybody that's going through something like that now and having to do it on their own. But it's really challenging and my, my thoughts go out to those who are the, the husbands or the wives or the brothers, sisters or whoever that have to sit outside and wait like I did for hours and hours, just desperately wanting to know what's going on. Sherry went through some checkups and was issued with some more drugs and we went home. To put into context some of the drugs she was given, one was a suppository and the rest was essentially what can only be described as a cocktail of some extremely powerful drugs. But again, unfortunately, these didn't work either. And that really shows how much pain she was in. By the time we got home, nothing had changed. She was back on the living room floor. And at this point, she hadn't gone for a wee for over 24 hours. This was mainly because it was just so hard and painful to get to the toilet, let alone actually sit on the toilet and be able to relax enough to relieve yourself. It was pretty much impossible. Sherry had actually managed to get a short amount of sleep on the living room floor. Um, packed with blankets around her, blankets over, again in that same only position that she could find any sense of relief. And when she woke up, unfortunately, she was still in agony. And at this point, we needed to try and get her to go to the loo. And unfortunately, in that process, Sherry lost control of her bladder. We were now in quite a serious position. The nerve could have been at that point pressing on something that was doing some serious damage to her internal organs. Now, depending on where and um, where and what nerve the prolapse is pressing on, this could have some lifelong impact. This is really serious. 
So when we rang again the non-emergency number, it became an emergency. They sent an ambulance to pick Sherry up and get her to the hospital. We didn't see her for four days. She was in the hospital, no visitors, on her own, in complete agony. To put this pain into context, Sherry says to me that she would rather give birth again. That's how painful this was. After four days, Sherry was sent home on a series of drugs. Again, to put some more context to it, one of those drugs was morphine, which in the UK, they're very, very strict about prescribing because of how addictive it can be. In addition to that, she was given codeine and a, and, and a series of other drugs as well. The amount and type of drugs meant that Sherry could no longer breastfeed, therefore having an impact on what is a very emotional part of motherhood in those early months. In hospital, Sherry went through MRI scans for 15 minutes at a time, several invasive examinations, bladder scans, and regular COVID tests. And probably worse of all, four days of hospital food, which actually Sherry really likes. Whilst there is an option for an operation to resolve Sherry's problem, we were told that that operation is ideally avoidable and the preferred solution was physio. So Sherry was prescribed physio and we were told that this physio could be for at best case six months up to a year. And when we asked about how much the pain and, and the impact of where she was basically at home with Zimmer frames and how long this would go on for, again, we were told if, if we do well, six months. If it's bad, maybe a year. One of the other things that made the pain so bad was it wasn't just isolated to one place like an area in your back it would run from sherry's lower back all the way down her leg so it was just constant 24 7 pain from her lower back all the way down right to the tip of her toes in addition to the actual physical pain that sherry was feeling Another thing that made it so much more debilitating was a numbness that ran all the way down her leg to the tip of her toes, again, same as the pain. Her whole entire leg was just numb. You can imagine the feeling of not being able to feel your leg. So in essence, she was kind of limping or walking around the house, like I said, with a Zimmer frame, not just because of the pain, but actually because she couldn't really feel her leg. It was just completely numb was not only kind of physically hard, it was also kind of mentally hard to kind of not be able to feel quite a key part of your body. So it brings another mental challenge to it as well, which is really irritating. And you can imagine how much I would stress you out. In addition to the numbness, the pain, there was the pins and needles as well, predominantly in her feet. And this pins and needles is continuing on now, four months on, even though she's recovering really, really well, she still has these pins and needles in her feet now. And that she's been told by a physio that that could not go. That may be permanent nerve damage. Okay, so in a nutshell, that is the story of Sherry's slip disc. Why did I feel we needed to make this video? Well, for years I have been a manual handling trainer and for years I've talked about the seriousness and the potential of a slipped disc, but never have I experienced it. Never have I had a story of somebody who's experienced it and never have I seen it with my own eyes the agony in someone's face, the tears streaming down someone's face. They just utter no relief at all in any position, no matter what you do, it's just endless pain. And I absolutely urge every single one of you that are delivering manual handling training, that are managing manual handling training, that are doing manual handling uh, projects, that are doing posture awareness projects, that are doing DSE management, I urge you in your own person to look after your own back, to take all of this stuff seriously, to go beyond compliance, to not think this is just something we need to do to be compliant, to not roll your eyes when you think, oh, it's just another DSE assessment. Yes, they feel sometimes a little bit, oh, God, typical health and safety, but if you get it right, it shouldn't feel like that. And if you do it right, you should avoid something like what my wife went through and what our family went through. I absolutely urge every single one of you to take posture, your back, manual handling, DSE, seriously, please. Okay guys, that 
was something a little bit different. Hopefully it wasn't too serious. Hopefully you took something away from that. I, I think it's a powerful story. It definitely was to me and I, and I wanted to try and put that into the camera in, in our own style. And we bounced around a lot with this because it's kind of uncomfortable content for us. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you've got any stories or any thoughts on this, please put them in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit like and all of those buttons and go to Rebranding Safety, get yourself some merch if you want some. But otherwise, thank you for watching. Safe.